Now, to the women who came up with this idea, like, I don't know who you are, but like, <laughs> I love you. Yes, <laughs> geniuses. We were talking about that last night. Like, who's just like, I'm gonna make a go garden gnome out of a sock. It's gonna be great. Yeah. Just such creative people in this world. I love, I love that people are. It's true. <laughs> everybody making these really cute gnomes lately and so we thought we would give it a shot we went to Dollar Tree and we got a bunch of items um, some of the items were scarves which this one we've already cut to do a sample for you but it was just a general scarf super cute and cheap it was only a dollar at Dollar Tree we got a mop head so we can Open turn it. it into a beard. Cute. Um, we also got buttons. Buttons. We got our socks there that we are filling. The rice. So for the rice. Yeah, the rice. We got rice at Dollar Tree. That was awesome. Just a buck. Twine. You'll need twine. And fuzzy socks. We're only a dollar there as well. I keep saying that, but it's so exciting that you can get all these cool craft supplies at Dollar Tree for a buck and make something really cute. And then the hair elasties. And, oh, and our glue sticks. Oh, we got our glue sticks there, and we even got some blush for the gnomes' noses. Pretty much everything so, was from there, except for the beards. Yes, that was the only thing that we got at Walmart. Or you can get at any other craft, any other craft store, Joann's, or uh, there's like three other that have that. Hobby, Hobby Lobby? I don't know if they have that. I don't know if that. they have that. Right? There's you can pretty really much get it Joann's. anywhere, though. Okay, so we're going to get started, and we today are going to show you how to make three different styles of gnomes. We found the ones that we thought were the cutest, and we're going to show you how we do it. So you will want to buy rice, elastics, the kind that you would put in your little girl's hair, mm -hmm. any type of twine, you don't want super thick, um, blush, and either the mink fabric from Walmart or some type of fabric store, or a mop head. And Again, those are your- Dollar Tree basics that you need for it and then white socks and either fuzzy socks or some type of material or a scarf some of or, these things you may already have so yeah. it might not be that you have to go purchase all of these things to make this fun cute craft and you can even get more creative and, and add tons of different things like we're gonna put we got a pillow and we're just gonna use the stuffing out of it to um stuff the hats because it was so much cheaper to buy a pillow. Right, it was, it was way, easier, way cheaper. So, Okay, so I'm gonna get started by filling this sock. And the way that I found that works best when you're doing it alone, if you have somebody else to hold your sock, you can do that. But I just got a little measuring cup, I pour the rice in there, and then I just kind of tuck it inside the sock and pour it right in. So I'll get started on that. What are you getting started on, Laura? Um, I'm probably gonna cut some material to do out of a scarf. And FYI about the rice. So I tried to do this without her the other day because I was getting anxious and wanted to try it. And so I thought, well, it will be brilliant. I'll just cut a little slice in the bag and then I'll just dump it into the sock. Sounds like it'll work. It did not turn out that well. My whole RV is full of just rice everywhere. And it probably took two hours to vacuum up out of my shag carpeting. So, uh, so don't try one that. of these options. Either have a friend, have a buddy help you, or see if you can do it like this. Pouring it right into the sock, that's gonna be a problem. One of the main reasons is after I get this first cup in, I'll show you that you kind of have to squish the rice down. It doesn't move down into the sock on its own. So again, all I'm doing is just opening up my hands and grabbing the rice, and I'm just tipping it right in. And it looks all like this, but watch if you clink it on the table, it gets all short and fat and cute, and that's what we want. So we're gonna add some more rice too. So with the scarf, what I am going to try and mimic is the one that I made yesterday. Um, so he's he's a sleepy 
gnome. He's so he, cute. He's in his jammies. He's ready for bed. So um, I put stuffing in his hat and kind of crinkled it up like the sock ones look. Um, but this is just made out of a scarf and his beard and his nose. And then he's wearing pajamas with a bottom flap. <laughs> I love that he has a butt flap. That is so great. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to be cutting for right now. But I think instead of using the mink on him, mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna make a grandpa looking one and use the mop. Oh, that'll be so cute. I haven't decided if I'm going to do it one of two ways. So you can just do the mop like this, or you can spread these out and it kind of looks like ramen noodles. <laughs> I don't know if I like it or hate it, but I- I might be a little bit creepy looking like ramen noodles coming out yeah. of his face. And I feel like I have to try it because it could be cute so you never know okay so I think I have my sock pretty good I think I put probably four cups in here this is about what I did and so what I'm gonna do next is put kind of spin it around at the top and I'm gonna put an elastic rubber band to hold it in place and then I will put some twine around that as well because you never know if rubber bands they tend to give out on you well, just over time, it, you know, from sitting or if they're sitting in the sunlight. So, and some people don't use the rubber bands to do it. I just find it easier to uh, singly kind of do it um, with the rubber bands already holding it into place. Right. Again, if you had a buddy or somebody to help you, maybe you could do it just with the twine. But it's nice and easy on your own to just use a rubber band. My cutting skills are not working. I think <laughs> my scissors are dull. And I do not have good scissors because anytime I have bought a nice pair of scissors, my kids steal them. So, so I'm just cutting the twine a little bit short like this, which you could actually leave it long because we're going to be covering all of this up anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so there we go. I've got the start of my gnome. He kind of looks like a like an 80s punk rocker with this cute top. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the other thing I wanted to mention, this is a no sew project. We are not using any kind of sewing machine to do this. We are using our handy dandy little hot glue gun to be able to get everything together that we want. And some people have been sewing and adding and I can't getting sew. all crazy with it. But... I cannot sew. Every time I have tried to sew, I end up crying because it's just it's not <laughs> a fun game for me at all. Which is really sad because my grandmother is like a major amazing seamstress and I'm like, no, I did not get that gene. See, and I know how to sew, but I sew very crooked and I actually worked as a seamstress once uh, at my many jobs and uh, the lady really liked me, but she said that I had cutting skills less than a kindergartner <laughs> and <laughs> but I could not sew for the life of me. <laughs> so I learned how to sew, I know how to do it. I wouldn't say I'm an expert. <laughs> Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do, I have a fuzzy sock. And I did one last night with a teeny tiny kid sock. Oh, that's Kinley's over there. Can you hand me that when you're done? This one? Yeah, thanks. So Kinley made this one last night. And this is actually a little teeny tiny kid sock on top. So you can use small socks or you can use the bigger socks. And she has a little um, button there for the nose and she was trying to make a little bumblebee up here as a little thing on her hat so and just with some cute right here. this project works great for kids too we let them make some gnomes and they loved it so this is my gnome hey, can my you run a little blush brush rent? Nope. So either way works just fine to have a smaller sock or a bigger sock but right now I'm going to be using this sock because instead of leaving his back all open white with the sock, which is fine to do, but you also can cut the sock in half and use half of it for his hat and half of it for his clothes that he's wearing. And that little sock, actually, I think we got that from the Dollar Store. We did, yep. Which I was kind of shocked about. Yeah, those were from Dollar Tree. These were from Dollar Tree. We got red ones, we got black ones, we got some cute stripy ones. I was really impressed. And even Emery, she walked in and she was hoping she got to wear them because she loves fuzzy socks. <laughs> I said, nope, they're for crafts. You don't get to wear them. Okay, Laura, so the one, you think just straight across, is that what you said? 
So yeah, they say to cut straight across on the heel. And that way you can use the top part of the sock. Well, I guess this one's already been now. Yeah, that's the one that she was trying to show us. So this top is going to be like his coveralls. Cute. Okay. And then this top will be his hat. So I'm going to use the part that was already sewn together, which would have been the top of the sock, to come up on his body. And this part I'm going to tuck under and just glue it under his bottom. Just get him dressed right now. So, of course, as we're taping, my um, cutting skills are getting worse. <laughs> They're declining. So, yeah, don't judge me. <laughs> I can't get with it. The thing that's great with this project is anytime you mess up, it just seems like you can tuck it under whatever you're working on and it looks just fine. So, yeah, it'll turn out cute no matter what. I mean, you can't really tell, but this was like a first time project. And so there's like glue, you know, really noticeable places. But <laughs> I think if I were paying attention more the second time around, that it would probably be less glue looking. That's usually how it goes with projects. You kind of have to have your first one that's a trial run. All I did was glue the bottom down like this, and it doesn't matter what it looks like because this part's going to be on your table or wherever he's sitting. And it comes about halfway up on him. I haven't glued it yet because um, I'm not sure exactly where the beard is going to go and where I want his nose. So we're going to wait to do that part next. Okay, so there's lots of different ways that you can do the gnomes' noses. Um, we've done buttons, which turned out really cute. Um, one that Emery made has a wooden bead on it that's really cute. But I really love the way that the noses turn out when you just pinch it, pinch part of the sock with the rice in it, and make him a really big, fat, cute nose. So all I'm going to do now is take it and just kind of pull some of my rice up there and create a little nose. And I'm gonna stick an elastic around it again and the same thing with the twine as we did before. Elastic and then the twine. And you know you're dividing screws. <laughs> That's a nice nose. So here's his little nose that I made. We're gonna make sure that his hat sits right on top of his nose and that the beard is gonna come up right underneath. And it doesn't matter where the clothes are in the front, we just want the clothes to be visible in the back in case you ever turn him around. It looks like he's wearing clothes. A little jumpsuit. What did you call it? Coveralls. Coveralls. Yes. Okay. And so now that I have the hat, which is just the other part of the sock, the top part of the sock, I'm just gonna put it on and see how it looks and try to get it to kind of droop over just a little bit like this one droops over and I will glue it over there to keep it in place. I am finishing off the hat and I have put just a little bit of stuffing at the end like this and I'm going to glue his hat on and this will kind of roll over and just be the kind of end. I'm going to put a rubber band around here to hold it like this and it will help it to just kind of roll over a little bit. So I have it set here before I glue, just so you can get an idea. See how we put the pom-pom on and it kind of holds it over and we're gonna glue it to where it looks like a seamless in the back where you don't see the sock. And then we're gonna add his beard, which will cover up this whole area here in front. So I'm gonna do a big hat on a little baby. <laughs> it's gonna be great. The house is gonna be great. Name that movie. I'm always about movie trivia, right? So name that movie. The house is gonna be great. In more of a sarcastic tone, maybe. The house is gonna be great. Well, I just cut his hat and I cut a square and then I just kind of cut into a somewhat of a... Triangular shape? Yeah, and then I'm gonna take the scarf and I'm just gonna cut, you're gonna measure just a guesstimate how much you think you're gonna need to cover the body. So I'm gonna cut to right here. And I have his little hat all glued on with his pom-pom and it's kind of curved over. And next we are going to add his beard. So now I'm gonna put his coveralls on. Cute. So I've got a beard piece here. It's cut about three inches by four inches. 
however long you want to have your beard and however wide you want it to go around his body. This one is gonna look about like this, so it's gonna fit really nicely. And a little trick is to cut a triangular shape out of the top of the beard. That way you can tuck it right up under his nose. And as I'm gonna be gluing this, I'm just gonna tuck the beard the best I can up close to his hat. You want it nice and snug up there. And if you can get it under the hat just a little, it will look good. And then you won't have the edges of the beard showing. So I cut a little triangle under mine so that I could tuck his nose in underneath so that I can get the fabric up higher on his face. He's like in jammies. Look how cute he is in his jammies. I love it. So now that I have his beard on, I can tug up his pajamas or coveralls or whatever it looks like he's wearing right up under his beard and I will glue it so that you do not see that white sock. And he's just about done. So I'm just gluing the fabric to his body and trying to keep it as high up as possible up here because they don't have eyes. So I need the hat to make sure to cover the actual where the eyes would be. That's what makes them so cute is that, that, that let's try that again. That's what makes it so cute that they don't have eyes. It's pretty cute. I'm also going to glue his beard a little bit to the front of him just to kind of hold it in place and keep it still. So as I'm getting to the other side of the gnome with the fabric, as you can see, um, I'm going to want to line it up with the other piece of fabric on the other end, just so it looks nicer. Um, and I'll probably fold over the fabric just to kind of cover it, give it a nice hem mm -hmm. looking. Make it look finished. Yeah. Okay, I am going to give this gnome a cute little rosy nose because he's outside and it's cold out there. Just take the blush and just put it right all over his nose. You can do it as light pink or darker as you want. Whatever you think looks cute. Some people use like wood beads um, for the noses. Um, I think Ray made eyes for one because he was really bothered by the fact that they didn't have oh, eyes. Oh, yes. So he used buttons for That's eyes. hilarious. And his, his turned out super cute, too. And again, this is something you can do with your kids. Like, just a fun craft for cheap. Yeah, we're going to put in some of the video of what we did last night. It was kind of chaotic because there were so many kids everywhere playing. But it was really cool to be able to do this project with them. They got to choose everything they wanted to do. We just helped them with the glue gun. Um, and filling their socks and everything else was their own idea and how they wanted to do it. So it was really fun. Wherever you're doing it. Yeah, in a second. <laughs> hey, Kinley, can I borrow your ruler you got What? Your ruler? Ooh, that's a good idea. Hey, you can put the beard right up over it. Oh, I think I did it too pink. I don't think so. I don't think you can make it too pink because the lady was saying that their noses are cold from being outside. Oh, cute. Cold noses. So, do you put the them outside? No, they're just, she was just yeah, joking. So, yeah. no, okay. Pink nose. Yeah, because it works. The real question. They look like scarecrows. Wait, let me see. One sec. Let me like. Because you couldn't go upstairs. I hope you know. My crush is and you know, kids, they come up with the craziest thing. They do, and they end up turning out so cute. And it's their own original idea, so that's really fun. So right now he kind of just looks like a sack. <laughs> <laughs> he will look cuter, but. And then I'm gonna fold these pieces over just to kind of give him a cover on his butt. Um, and I don't worry about it like making it unlevel because the rice is so heavy. Right. It's going to be just fine. Okay, so my gnome is finished. How cute is he? When you turn him, you can see that he's all dressed, but he's got this cute beard. So the best part about these gnomes is that you can give them kind of like a whimsy, whimsical, whimsy, looking funny thing mustache just by kind of taking it to the side. What were we calling them last night? Wings? 
Yeah. We were giving him wings and it totally changes the look of the gnome by flailing out his mustache hair. Just like that. Isn't that so cute? Oh my gosh, I love these things. These are awesome. Okay, so that's one of the ways to make a gnome. And for those of you who are questioning like it's rice and cause you can do it with beans too. I've seen it with beans. I'll show you one that has beans. I didn't find it as cute uh, forming. The forming seemed a little off, um, but people do do it with beans. Um, some people leave the bags the way they are and just throw the bag into the sock. The beans or the rice in the bag? Yeah, oh, and okay. so because they're afraid of mice or oh. ants or things like that. Yeah, but, that makes sense. Um, we were talking about that last night and I personally didn't like the way it looked. I feel like it had a different look to it. I think this guy's a bean one. Yeah, and see, they're a little more... They're just the shape they are. Whereas yeah. the rice, you can really form it to make it cute and plump, however you want it to be. The rice is definitely easier to work with. Yeah. So we were talking about this last night, and I'm like, what if, you know, because I live in an RV, um, what if this causes ants or, mm -hmm. you know, you never know what critters you're gonna get exactly. in your house. Exactly, exactly. But, um, so we decided we would put um, lavender and peppermint oil oh. in the rice or beans right. to keep them away. That's a really great idea. I like that tip. Uh, for you. Peppermint is literally the best oil because we use it at home to keep the mice and I want to say snakes don't like it either. Really? And I do not like snakes. Those are probably my least <sighs> favorite thing ever. Snakes. <laughs> Which is funny because our niece owns a snake. It's like her baby. So I have a funny snake story while Laura's over there gluing. So um, my sister's kids are really outdoorsy and they always have been. They love um, all animals, everything that crawls on the earth. They love it. Uh, snakes and bugs and birds and owls and all kinds of stuff. And they have quite a few animals at their house. Well, I went to stay with them for about a week a few years ago when my kids were little. And one day after I had already been there for two or three days, my sister tells me that her son's snake has been missing in the house for weeks. Oh my gosh, I panicked. I was like, my babies are sleeping in your house around yeah it super freaked me out not a fan of the snakes and I could just see Julie just oh yeah like, like totally oh, yeah. nonchalant oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Kai snake got out a couple weeks ago he's somewhere no big deal as I'm having a panic attack in the corner okay how's he coming so he's looking more like um what do we call them last night veggie tails oh veggie tails you guys watch veggie tails so he kind of looks like a veggie tail guy right now it's so funny I think it's paw grape that makes me think these look like him because I think he's wearing like little spectacles and you can't really see his eyes and he's got his nose and his oh, beard. Paw grape. That would be so cute is to get <gasps> spectacles. Glasses. Yes. Oh. And put them on. Oh my gosh. The actual gnomes. Okay, that's hilarious. Yeah, now I, I want to find like a Hobby Lobby. Uh, or we could just shape them out of wire. Couldn't we do it ourselves? We probably could. We or we could have Ray do it. Yeah, Ray could that do it. That kid. <laughs> can make anything we I'll have to show you but we did uh our fairy gardens, fairy gardens. and he made ladders so that our gnomes and fairies oh, could get into the so great yeah if you so watch cool. our last video about Kinley's birthday um her aunt Laura bought her a bunch of cute little things again from Dollar Tree love Dollar Tree um to make a fairy garden and there was this big circle to put them in and all the cute moss and all the little pieces it was adorable and then yeah Ray helped with making a little stick ladder out of twigs outside He's pretty clever. Yep. But I thought that was such a great gift, wasn't it? To do fairy gardens. And they did it together, which is even better because half the time, a gift of time is my favorite way to do things. Okay, he's getting his little hat together. So I just wanted to make sure it was going to fit because I... <laughs> Got so many hats today, and not all of them fit. But it looks like he will be fine to be wrapped around his head. Cute. So now I am going to. I took the top and I just glued the top, and then I heard and flipped it because the other times that I tried doing this, the uh, top of the hat, the big corner there, was really hard to get back out. And we so... even tried a pencil. Where is our pencil that we were using? Trying to use a pencil to poke it, and she the was scissors. Just, yeah, and, it, and I believe it's because of the fabric. The we're fabric using is so scarfy, soft. Like, right. 
Um, but maybe these, if we're using fabric fabric, it might right. be better. And these would be very cute, but I love the idea of the scarf because you typically think of garden gnomes as being outside anyway. So how funny that they have on a winter scarf. And I mean, we had to because my niece was like, oh, you have to make him a bottom flap for his pajamas. <laughs> and so, I mean, she's so clever. So this is just way too cute. That's to awesome. Out. And I haven't seen any gnomes like this. No, yet. I have not. So this seen is the first. Very good. To completely dress them. I love it. So I'm just going to fold over the little pieces really quick. Um, and then Mindy is going to cut. Where is that thing? Mindy's going to cut all the pieces on this. Get it ready to be used as a beard. Okay, so I've got these cut. And as we're looking at all the different gnomes that we've made and the different shape that they take, we're laughing because it's almost like they have their own personalities. Some of them are fat and short. Some of them are a little skinnier. This guy happens to have this big giant forehead thing coming out. They're cracking us up. I because of the heel? The heel of the sock is yeah. how it happened to go. So, like I said, the night that I decided to do this all without her because... I felt like she was taking too long. <laughs> we were we had a lot going on this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> so I just filled a bunch of them, and Cute. like some of them did turn out like this. And I almost think that like these are the ones we should add eyes to because uh, like this is their forehead. Right. But I mean, you don't have to. That's I hilarious. know Ray did, and it was really cute. But also, you can kind of see the form through the hat, so depending on how tight you put the hat. Right. Out. But you can make them all different sizes, and that's the crazy thing, like. These ones are huge. These ones are middle sized. Then you have babies. Yeah, tiny baby ones. So cute. This is one Amarin did yesterday. He wanted to do all buttons for the face. And my two year old twins, oh my gosh, they're like, my baby gnome, my baby gnome. And they think it's their doll. So they're like carrying it around the house. Okay. Whatever, that was a really cheap doll. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a great idea. Caitlin took her gnome into Nolan, who had already gone to sleep for the night, and she said, this is my baby gnome that I made. Will you raise it with me? And he was like, what? Yeah. So we've been kind of silly with gnomes at our house lately. Mm -hmm. Everything's gnome. I don't know what Bella is trying to get under the table. What are you getting, Bella? Something. Okay. So for the third one, as she's finishing up that hat, I'm going to use this big monster guy, this big daddy. And we are going to use the mop. We just cut all the mop pieces off and we're gonna use this as his beard. It's gonna be great. So I'm gonna get working on a hat for him right now. Um, I've lost it. Here it is. We're gonna use this black hat for him. He's gonna be this old fun grandpa guy with a hat on. Something along those lines. We'll see how it comes out. And the other thing about this is because I always have like a total mishap one whenever I do anything. <laughs> it's your trial. You gotta do yeah. trial by error. Trial and error is my my life model because <laughs> i can't get it right the first time but the great thing about these is that like they don't cost that much and even if you did mess up you could easily just cut the sock off and put it into a new sock start over yeah definitely it's not so much of one of those projects where you're like oh my gosh i just spent like six dollars to make one yes. and i have and to I ruined it. yeah, yeah. Okay, so here is his hat. I'm going to glue it to his head and I'm going to uh, glue the sock kind of over at an angle like this just so it like curves over super cute. I don't know if you can hear in the background noise I mean, because I don't know how much they can hear, but I don't either. my niece-in-law is telling my two-year-old about time out. Do you so, know why you're time out? It's funny because he is the best with time out like you put him in time out and he stays there it's almost adorable <laughs> like you you laugh a little bit and feel bad that you're laughing because he like cute just sticks his head in the corner and just stays there he knows he gets it he's a smart kid but definitely my older one time out was like are you kidding me <laughs> Um, I have twin boys that are almost three now. Oh, wow. Yeah. That went way fast. And our life is crazy. And then we have a 10 year old boy. Actually, sometimes he's harder than the twins because, you know, the twins have someone to bounce off of and he's more like 
Oh my gosh, these kids won't leave me alone. <laughs> There's a big gap, so he's... The twins are busy. So They're busy boys. And then we travel around the country. That's what we're doing here. We're just visiting for like a month. Um, and we're happy to have them. We've loved it. It's been so great. So you should watch our channel because our channel is kind of a mixture. It's going to be a lot of like beauty and fashion tips and things like that just because I like that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I like to have an excuse to go buy something. <laughs> and if I can justify why I'm buying it, then, but you know, to do a honey. video, then, then I don't feel so guilty. That's funny. But it'll also be more of like RVing and like I have a lot of tricks on RVing and stuff like that. Different tips to give people. Yeah, like just different ways to help organize in your RV. Like you'd be surprised. Living in an RV, a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, how are you going to fit all your stuff in there? And you really, it was not as hard as I thought it was going to be. That's awesome. Yeah, so watch our channel too. We'll, we'll put a link below. Yes, definitely. Okay, so I have his little hat on, if you can see how it flops over there. <laughs> and now they're yelling at Bella. They're out there babysitting so that we can be in here and craft. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna spread them out, but they're long enough. Um, I did the hems and now I'm gonna glue them together. So the way that I'm gonna do this is I have separated the beard into little strands and I've tied it in a knot right at the end so it's easier for gluing and then I'm going to tuck this up under the hat and glue it right there which cut I glued it and I shouldn't have and as I said like every time I touch glue like every time I work with glue I become a ball of glue myself your ball of glue My uh, thing sounds like a creaking door in an old house. So that's how my um, brake pedal is in my car. Oh no, isn't your car really new? It you? is, it just squeaks. I've had cars like that. And in the morning, even though I do a carpool with seven children in oh my, my car, gosh. there's seven kids in my car, they're almost silent most of the way to school. And so you can actually hear the little creak of my my brake pedal every time I push it down. That must be so weird coming from our small town in Snowflake where, you know, you're like, okay, time for school. Can't get out of the house. Go walk to school. Yes. So nice. Because everything was so close. We live 15 minutes from the kids' school. So it's, it's quite an ordeal to get them up in the morning and get to school on time. And with picking up the other kids that I carpool with. So I'm gonna leave just the tiniest opening at the bottom, just in case my hat is not 100% the right size. Because this way it leaves me a little leeway to kind of pull it on over. Um, so just the tiniest bit. I know, it's really fat, he just fell over. I think it's because he's a little more lopsided on the top. Oh. Most of them aren't, you know what I mean? Right. So let's see. Okay, so my hat is going to fit. <laughs> That's great. So he's going to be super cute. Um, right now I'm going to put, I think I'm going to put his beard on and then I'm going to put his hat on. So I've cut a bunch of the mops. Look how cute this is going to look. I just think it's going to look adorable. And I love this. The whole idea of doing the ramen noodles. And I keep saying ramen noodles because I don't know what else to call it. It does, it, it really looks does. like ramen noodles. So I'm just gonna put a little blob of glue on the top, kind of let it dry a second. Then I'm gonna take like scissors or something or a pencil and kind of fold it down in attempt to not get the glue all over my fingers, but I don't know why I tried. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna see? get all over you. Yeah, it always does. And then I'm just gonna glue it to his face. 
And I mean, you kind of want the beard to go up pretty high because you want, um, or maybe you don't, you know, maybe you want it to look really, but so that my thing will cover him. And at the end, we'll trim if the hair needs, if yeah. it needs it. I mean, it could be cute with it just hanging over your banister or your... Exactly. That's what I like. If you're going to sit it on a shelf or up on your fireplace ledge or something. Um, the ones that we made last night, they all kind of, their beards hang down a little bit longer than, than their bodies. It's pretty cute. So I have heard to do two layers. So to kind of layer one and then layer a second one below okay. it or right on top of it. Okay. Especially if you're doing the ramen noodles. Yes, perfect. Because I wondered how thick to make them. That's perfect. Um, and also I was thinking just in that moment that we're talking that if you wanted to get super creative, you could like make like a curly beard. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh, that's exactly the one my dad would like. <laughs> he always has wanted his mustache to do that. Yeah, I would love to be the Monopoly man. If I was a guy, I would have the Monopoly man face. In I fact, think that... There's a baseball player that my dad would always tell me that has that mustache. Our nephew, our twin identical nephews, uh -huh. the oldest set of twins in our family, um, they they had that beard cut. Oh, while. that's hilarious. And they put on a top hat one time. Oh my gosh, that's really cute. Yeah, it was hilarious. I feel like I'm going to need to style his beard, like I want to... To play with it or braid it or something. It's so cute. And you could because it's ramen noodles <laughs> already. <laughs> and I'm just making up words. That's not really what it's called. It's just. What do you That's call what it looks like. Stringy, to me. A stringy beard, maybe. Okay. So here's how it's coming along. That is hilarious. It's so cute. I like it. Okay. Add whatever you want. Like mine, I, I made last night. I added a bunch of buttons. Um, button at the top. Because I couldn't get the point to look really cute at the top. So I used the button. That's the best about craft projects. When you mess up or you don't get things how you want it. You just add a button or add something cute to it. Ends up looking cuter anyway. Now, to the women who came up with this idea, like, I don't know who you are, but, like, <laughs> I love you. Yes. <laughs> Geniuses. We were talking about that last night. Like, who's just like, I'm going to make a go garden gnome out of a sock. It's going to be great. Yeah. Just such creative people in this world. I love, I love that people are. It's true. We need those people in this world. It makes it a brighter and fun place. Plus, it gives you... Great crafty ideas. It does. Because how fun is this and how cute does it look? I mean, because I would never be sitting in my RV and say, hey, I'm going to make a gnome out of a sock. I just don't know how that would, you know. <laughs> That's hilarious. But they're the cutest thing in the world. So I'm actually making several gnomes because I love them so much. Um, I'm making several of them because I have, um, if you have an RV or you've ever owned one, you'll, you'll know. But like, the valances that are over the windows, they're kind of like a shelf almost. They have like a oh, yeah. two or three inch, yeah. So my idea was, because I love gnomes, and I think they're the cutest thing in the world, so I'm gonna make a bunch of them that will sit right on top of my two window seals and my slide in my living room. So we'll have little gnome friends that'll travel That'll be with so us. great. So I'm getting a little lazy about my, so I'm doing two at a time. Nice. So I can't decide if it's pure laziness or just actually I'm more creative, but. <laughs> Is those birds? Can you hear that? That's birds, birds, right? Geese. geese, yeah, that's what I mean. And there's a herd of geese flying over us. No, oh, that's the word for it. It was really windy this morning. Like, it was. Our whole camper, so our camper's like parked in their front yard. Well, on their driveway. But the whole camper was moving today. Oh like, my gosh. You could feel it rocking. and Normally you don't feel anything, but it was that windy that it, 
was moving it around. So I wouldn't be surprised if the geese are out and about trying to get a little wave. So we were in Wisconsin was one of the places we were just recently at for my husband's work. And um, when we got there, we didn't realize it, but there's no birds. There was no sound. Oh. So when we went to visit my mother-in-law in Tennessee, um, the first night, the first morning we woke up, I'm like, oh my gosh, do you hear that? Birds. And Charlie's like, what? And I'm like, that sound, what is that sound? Because it was kind of muffled, you were uh -huh. inside. And he's all, I don't know. And then it took him a minute and he goes, the birds? And I was <laughs> like, oh my gosh, that's birds. Because he hadn't heard it in so long. Wow. You kind of take it for granted when you hear them all. Yeah. Yeah. So then when we were here the first morning, we heard birds and my baby's like, birds, birds, <laughs> as if it was the first time he'd ever heard a bird. I love it. It's weird too, because as a kid, you know, you're taught that they all fly south for the winter, but it's winter. In Arizona, yeah. they don't fly anywhere. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're used to them being out there. What you doing, Bella? Are you nervous about something? You know the kids are coming home soon. You want to see the kids? Only Kinley, actually. Kinley will be home soon. Where's Kinley? <gasps> Where is she? You love Kinley, don't you? You sleep with her every night. So this dog, her dog is insane funny. You have to get on and watch the one where Bella is chasing the balloons. Oh, she loves balloons. She is amazing. <laughs> she is the best at that game. She's so crazy. I watched that for the first time and I was just like, oh my gosh, that is the cutest dog in the world. It happened by accident too. I mean, like who knew that a dog would do that, but kids were playing with the balloon and she just took over. It is a funny video. You should definitely watch it and have your kids in the room because they will get a total kick out of it. <laughs> She's been a fun dog. She's a little crazy when people are here because she is all up in your business because she loves everybody. But she's a really good, sweet dog. Who's funny? Always doing something funny. We were saying prayers last night and right at the end, I was about to open my eyes and she comes up to me and she's like, <laughs> right in my kiss. face. <laughs> Okay, so Laura had talked about doing two layers, but as I tried to layer mine, I didn't like the way it looked. So I'm actually leaving mine just single layer. And if the sock underneath is, is a, you know, looks ugly and you don't like it or whatever, you could always add some clothes around your guy. But here he is like this with his cute, cute, cute beard. And I am going to do his nose a little bit pink now. See, I almost feel like I shouldn't have done a second layer on mine. I feel like it may be too much, but we'll see. I think it could work, but I don't think I started mine in the direction that would have made it look good. Some, Some people use those. For decoration. Okay, so here is a finished gnome. He's got a pink nose and a black cute little hat and a super cute ramen noodle beard. He's so cute. Look at him. Oh him. my gosh. He's, he's adorable. Big and fat. He's so cute. Look how <laughs> airy we are. I know. I just as we sat down, back. we sat oh. down to do this video and I said, of course, <laughs> we're going to wear black to watch a bit, to do a video where we're going to use mink yes. and all these fabric yes. fibers are just going to end up everywhere. And this hair, this little beard hair, mink stuff, it does. It gets all over you. So, oh my gosh, these are so there's cool. mine. Cute! I like it! I'm, I'm kind of debating on doing the, the Monopoly face. That is hilarious. We've got to find... I'm trying to think if we have any wire. Hey, Ben. Come here. Uh-huh, I think so too. 
She's a grandpa. There's Miss Kinley song. Grandpa. The bus drop her off right here? No, the lady I carpool with. Oh. Benji, look. Isn't he cute? This is long, curly. Look at mine. Gandalf here. Gandalf. Is that some mops? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. From a dollar store. What do you do? Undo yours more? Yeah. yeah. Hey, like ramen noodles. Gandalf. That's hilarious. Uh, Gandalf does make sense. Wait, you don't have a hat. She's working on it. Oh, oh, I have a hat. Oh, nice. I just haven't put it on yet. Kimmy's home! So, I like the way it looks when it's a little stuffed. Mm -hmm. So, we said earlier that we bought that pillow. Right. Which I still think is such a brilliant idea. It's so much cheaper than the stuffing you can buy in the craft section. So like even this one, I put a little bit of stuffing in him. Just up in the top and the hat to kind of give it an opening feel. But they are really, really cute. Just laying flat. Floppy. And floppy. I just happen to like them um, with the fabric. Can you walk around, sweetheart. Walk around. So right now I'm just kind of slowly stuffing a little bit of fabric in here. literally dying at how cute these are and then you can manipulate your hat you can glue it down like I did mine fold it however you want and kind of make it look curvy or whatever looks cute because they yeah. have their own personality so you have to put the hat on and then you decide what it does <laughs> so one of these spots as a whole so I just took a big old pillow, cut a little tiny hole at the top so it doesn't end up all over the house. Clever. And then I'm just pulling out as much stuffing as I need. You know, nobody likes to clean up a big old mess, so. And then I just kind of separate it so it's kind of a fluff instead make of it like. Nice and fluffy, yeah. yeah, like you don't. I mean, you could. You can make it look really. Thick and full and Yeah, stuff. full yeah. in certain areas, but I kind of want mine to look more spread out and natural. But, I don't know, maybe I'll do it completely pointy. Ben came in and said they look like Gandalf, so <laughs> I don't know. Now I'm kind of debating Gandalf. on if it should be more pointy. <laughs> he needs a staff. Thou shall not pass. Doesn't he have glasses, too? I don't know if he has glasses. Look, Kimmy. Kinley just got home from school. Do you like him, his kid? Yes. Is he so cute? Yeah. He's like a cute old grandpa, right? Mm-hmm. Look at yeah, this one. Okay. Where's mine? I don't know. Do you have homework? Yeah. Okay, yeah. get your homework done first, okay? Oops. I made this one today. Look, he's wearing jammies. Aw. Uh, what about this one? Maybe you can monkey with that. Bless you, Bella. She probably got that stuff up her nose. I bet she got minky stuff up her nose. Because oh, yeah. she's sniffing on the ground. Kelly, go get your homework done, okay? And then maybe you and Amber can go and see. Homework first, though. Did you get some fur up your nose, Bella? Huh? Did you get fur up your nose? Hi. The babies are done with us now. Uh, I know, I'm almost done. Holding it right now. Hi, Bella. Look, do you like him? Oh, is he your friend? Do you like that one? Hi, Bella. Don't eat in his nose. You like them? Where's the babies? Hmm? Whoops. So now I'm just going to glue his hat on. <laughs> he looks so funny. Why every time we put the hat on, I start cracking up? They look hilarious. I think I'm gonna bend the top. I like it. That's so cute. Anakin, do you like this one? Oh, he's cute. Hi, Jesus. Just gonna pick a spot, glue it on. Give and you, butt flap. you could be more creative or more fun and adventurous and leave it to where you could open the butt flap and do buttons and get all crazy like that, but. I know that my kids are going to grab this. So. 
I could have because I was in a hurry, but just looks cute. like that. A little flap. Oh, there you go. Really cute. Awesome. Okay, so these are the three that we made today, the three different styles. Cute. They turned out awesome. Super Again, cute, super easy. The mops are a lot cheaper than the mink because the mink can get kind of pricey. So but still overall, this is a pretty cheap, easy project. Um, whether you're doing just a couple to have, or if you're gonna do this as a project with your kids or with some other people and you wanna do a few of them, or give them away as gifts, um, still pretty cheap and easy to make a really cute, cute little gnome. And I would suggest um, doing the nose first. Before putting on the Yeah, we've been doing it after, and sense. we're not quite getting the edges, but yeah, you couldn't tell unless you looked closely. Cute, I love it. Go make yourself some gnomes. Thanks, see ya, bye.